Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another grounded video. Pro possibly our last grounded video on the uh, game, unless we get some unannounced DLC that actually has uh, new insects, new labs, new uh, playability content. This is likely our last video. So we did our positive review, our 10 positive things about the game a couple days ago. So now, inevitably, we had to jump into the negative aspects of the game. Now, these are just my opinion. These are my 10 worst things about Grounded. So let's jump into it. And you can see right here, we have a wolf spider just chilling in my base. So we're going to jump off with the insect AI. Now, the insect AI is completely broken. Uh, there was a lot of people being able to cheese insects early on, which, granted, give the players credit. That's what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to find the easiest way to uh, kill the insects without getting killed themselves. So... The way they tried to improve this was a couple months ago, they allowed the insects to be able to jump. So now, no more hiding on higher places, just shooting the insects with arrows. Well, you can see right here, the insects still get stuck, right? I could walk around this whole area right here by my base, and this wolf spider is just stuck. Now, first off, this wolf spider shouldn't even be able to get into my base, because how he doesn't fit through the doors. So what is that telling me? It's telling me that he's able to phase through walls which is not an intended aspect of the game whatsoever so he can jump back and forth now he's up there look at this now he's back down and now he's gonna break combat because I'm gonna walk away over here so now we're out of combat the insect AI is completely broken it should be completely fixed in this type of game um, you have an insect, it should chase you for a little bit. You should be able to attack it without getting damaged. It should be able to chase you. Every spider should be able to crawl up the structures, not just jump. They should be able to crawl up, break through your house if they want to get through, not just phase through the walls. So that being said, let's go ahead and leave this guy alone. We're going to head on to number two, and that's going to be the alleged forced early release of the game. So the game was supposed to uh, have frequent updates, and then it went to infrequent updates every couple of months. And then it went to uh, just being released. Now, there are a lot of reasons that we can theorize about why it was uh, forced to be uh, released earlier. Because apparently this is just a pet project with a few people just working on it and wanting to do something in the vein of Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Which is a great concept. But the execution towards the end just kind of fell really short. Now, we can look at Steam statistics. We can't really look at Game Pass statistics on how many people are playing it, what the drop-off is, and what the popularity is. But... I can guarantee that the popularity of the game has dwindled uh, vastly since its September, September 27th release of this year. Another thing I want to talk about is the upper yard itself. So the upper yard being the uh, introduced a couple months ago prior to full release with no insects in it. And then when full release came, they literally just took the bag of every insect that was in the game and dumped it into the upper yard. Uh, you have black ox beetles, ladybird larvae, ladybird... Uh, weevils, aphids, fire ants, tiger mosquitoes, everything, orb weavers, everything that could be in the upper yard. They just said, hey, you know what? This upper yard is pretty barren. Let's go ahead and dump every insect into here. You can't really fight one insect by itself over here. If you're looking for a black ox beetle, good luck trying to fight it one-on-one. -on -one. If you're looking for a ladybird, good luck fighting it one-on-one. -on -one. Ladybird larvas are in abundance. The fire ants are just run rampant over this area. And it's just really insane the amount of insects that they've just dumped into this upper yard to try to fill in the uh, the gaps that are here. It's really disconcerting that they kind of took this huge, amazing area that they built up. The environment itself is amazing, but all they did was just dump a million insects in here to where it doesn't make it fun. You can't really go over here and experience the area without getting attacked by, you know, fire ants, black ox beetles, ladybirds, ladybird larvas, everything over all at once jumping into another thing that we're going to talk about is the uh the insect reskins right so we have larva down if down looking at the lower yard we have the larva we have uh stink bugs we have bombardier beetles orb weavers all of those uh aspects of those insects have been reskinned in one way or another the ants are turned into black ants turned into fire ants the larva are turned into ladybird larva and infected larva the ants were even used for the termite reskins. Uh, Obsidian actually did a video on that on the YouTube channel about how they use the ant skins to create the termite skins. Which is just, to me, it feels lazy. It feels... I understand it's cost-cutting and saves time, but it really takes away the experience of, like, when you're first playing the game, like, look at all these insects. I wonder what other insects we're going to get. And we can look at it here just from, from here. 
you can look at the uh, the reused insects, ladybugs and ladybird larvae, black worker ant, red worker ant, even the lawn mites into dust mites into the ticks. Um, bombardier beetles were, actually looked like they were used as a base for the black ox beetles. Stink bugs, obviously, and green shield bugs. The brood mother is also just another form of the different spiders. Even director Schmechter can be taken um, using some of his parts from some of the other uh, tasties and stuff like that that are in the game. The rusties and stuff like that that you see here. It's basically just a flying robot, right? And same thing with Dr. Wendell himself. Spoiler alert. The only, I think, separate insect they created was the actual mant itself and the praying mantis. Even the praying mantis probably has a body used from another insect. So it's really disconcerting that they kind of cut that corner just to eat, whether it's for the early release or not, that they just reskinned a lot of the insects. And that's one of the things that I really disliked about the game. Another thing, let's go ahead and while we're in our inventory here, we talked about mutations a little bit in our positive video. I love the fact that mutations were a part of the game. I love the fact that you can pick and choose which ones you want to use. Let me get away from this girl real quick. But the fact that a lot of them have to be active is kind of a letdown. A lot of these aspects of the uh, little fist, like using your fist, using the axe, using the hammer, spear, dagger. If you're using those, you should become adept at those. You shouldn't have to forget that how to use those and then relearn how to use these. So once you reach a certain point, I, I kind of felt like these should have been passive mutations. Like if you get adept at spears, then you should be able to have these uh, bonuses for spears no matter what, anytime you use them. Same thing with uh, chopping grass. If I learn how to chop grass, if I've spent you know 800 days in this backyard, I shouldn't have to click this on to remember how to chop grass fast. Another thing, Ant Annihilator, there should be a one of these for every insect in the game that I can either throw on actively or it should just become passively after a certain amount of insects killed. I should remember how to defend myself and have extra damage against ants after fighting so many of them or any other insect for that matter. Another thing I wanted to talk about was the uh, the quest system that we originally are introduced uh, to from Burgle and then later in the game they created the uh, the ASL for each of the, um, the field stations over here where we can just go over here and click on our quests. These quests originally were not supposed to be repeatable. It took almost until full release of the game for us to even get quests that involve the upper yard or the uh, sandbox for antlions and stuff like that. A lot of the pet quests are just completely repeated. And a lot of them are telling me that I need to go make an acorn face shield or an acorn mask when I'm this far into the game. That shouldn't be an aspect. I shouldn't have to get a quest for crafting aphid slippers when I'm this far in the game. Give me something that's going to cater to my ability, my progress in the game right now, as opposed to having me craft something that's uh, a beginning, beginning, beginning player should be crafting. Once you craft it and once you complete that qu crafting quest, you shouldn't ever get it again until you complete all the quests. And then even then, give a bonus for quest or for completing all those quests. Just my idea. One of the things I didn't like about the game again. So we've talked about insect AI, we've talked about the insect reskins, mutations, quests. One of the other things, uh, which is a big selling point of the game, is multiplayer. Being able to play with up to three of your friends and the shared world experience. We don't have live servers for the game, so the connectivity issues are rampant. And you have a lot of rubber banding, you have a lot of issues where you're fighting an insect, you're trying to hit it, and your hits are not registering. Now for whatever reason, I'll see our wolf spider move down here now. For whatever reason, they didn't want to spend too much money or put too much work into having uh, a live player, uh, a live server experience to where you could just have a server and have it uh, active for as long as the player is paying for it. They chose to go shared worlds, which shared worlds are really good as well. But again, you don't have that experience of where you can just all hop into a server at the same time. Somebody can go do something and then it saves the progress of what that one person is doing or the whole group playing on that server. And again, the rubber banding is just... They've put a lot of work into trying to create a better multiplayer experience. But from my experience, playing with somebody in the same house with me on the same Wi-Fi has drastically different issues than me playing with somebody across the country. Even though we both have great Wi-Fi, you still have running into the same issues. And that shouldn't be a concept of the game when your whole selling point is multiplayer uh, based on Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. Let's talk base raids. Now, base raids is something that happened when the game first early released back in 2020, I believe. And uh, you had an insects just come in and decimate your base. Everything you built was just getting destroyed by an abundance of insects. So they've tried to recreate that by having tiers of difficulty, basically. So your first raid is going to be like one insect. Your second, maybe two or three. Your third, maybe more than that. But then it caps out. And the thing is, there's never enough insects that actually come and raid your base to actually make it uh, 
a serious threat to where you should actually worry about it. The other thing is you don't see multi-insect raids, so if I'm pissing off a lot of different insects in the yard, I'm not going to have different insects coming to attack me. It's going to be based on who do I piss off more. Is it just larva? So I'm going to go get three larva attacking me. And another thing about the base raids is that they always attack from the same place. It's never a surprise. Once I get attacked from this base one time from a certain direction, I know they're, they're going to show up to that, from that coming from that same direction every single time. So all I have to do is once I see that base raid notification is go over to the one area that they always attack from. And then I can prevent them from doing any damage to my base. And also with the traps, we can talk about the traps a little bit as part of the base raids. The traps are... Lackluster uh, is putting it a nice way. You had spike traps and lore traps. Lore traps don't do anything for base raids. Spike trap was our only way of doing that. Now, they have added different uh, traps recently, but even those traps are just not worth it. One, because the, the cost of crafting them is just ridiculous. And the second cost, or the second aspect of it is that you don't get enough insects to raid yourself to warrant using these. The turrets are useless. You have to sit there and man them. So single player turrets are completely useless. The orc disruption bombs only work for the orc insects. The splinter trap is just an upgraded spike strip, but look at the cost of this. Wooden splinters, lint rope, and ash cement. Who's gonna go out and farm all those resources just to put them around their base and then have them just get destroyed, you know, within a few hits if you're not at your base when it, get, when it does get attacked. Base raids, a big fail. Let's talk about the upgrade system. One of the biggest things that they brought to the game, one of the biggest things that they botched in the game, in my opinion. So we went from having Quartzite to upgrade all your uh, weapons and armor, and then we went to having Quartzite taken away to having Rad Shards, Rad Nuggets, and Awesome Nuggets, or Cool Nuggets, what it was, or Fashion Nuggets and Rad Nuggets, whatever it was. Then they went back to having Quartzite, and then adding, adding Marble for your armor. So now you're going to find Quartzite Shards and Marble Shards all over the yard. The thing is, these don't respawn, Eventually you'll get oh he's back up top now eventually you'll get a recipe to craft the shards But again, then you have to go grind the resources just to craft the shards and then go use those to craft the mighty globs and stuff For your weapons or salty globs whatever you want for elemental weapons And then only to come find out that elemental weaknesses and resistance don't really matter Against the insects your best bet is just to craft a mighty weapon and go ham on the insect with that because you're not losing Any points whereas you would lose points when you're using the elemental weaknesses against that insect the upgrade system a great idea Just poor execution in a survival game like this now. Let's talk building my walls should not have uh, The capability to allow a wolf spider just phase through them now, not only that, I want to talk about the options we have. So we have a ton of options for building, which is great and everything. But a lot of times when you are building, things don't line up. You can't put stuff a certain way. We still don't have vertical half walls, which is what the community has asked for, I think, for the past two years in terms of early release during the game before full release. And then a lot of the stuff we just don't have. We don't have mushroom roofs. A lot of people want mushroom roofs. What they give us? Give us ash stuff because ash is a new thing. Now we have... Different stairs, mushroom stairs, but we don't have mushroom spiral stairs. We don't have grass spiral stairs. We have grass half stairs, mushroom stairs, and mushroom half stairs. We even have pebblet paths. Where? What about our clay paths? We don't have those. Buoyant foundations are completely useless because the only real place to use them is the lower pond. But then why even build a base on the lower pond if it can still get attacked by aerial insects? And then it's even more difficult to defend. The building... Is great and it keeps a lot of people involved in building these big massive structures building cities even but the fact is the building is just lackluster in this game because a lot of the stuff just doesn't line up we still don't have a triangle piece that can fit in a triangle roof piece so overall do I think grounded is a good game yes do I think it could be vastly improved upon absolutely 100% now whether it was forced to be released early or not we'll never know unless we get a an answer from Adam Brennicky himself are they planning on doing DLC? The answer is always a, a shy no, but maybe. So given the, given the propensity for them to kind of dodge questions directly with saying uh, we don't know or maybe, I think the only thing we're going to see is quality of life changes. And then after that, I wouldn't be surprised in the next six months, you're not getting, you're not getting any updates for the game anymore. The game was rushed out as far as we know. It kind of just got dumped upon us in September for no reason whatsoever. And there's a lot of improvements that need to be made. Now, the TV show is supposed to be coming out next year. Maybe next year, maybe 2024. I'm not 100% sure on that. Maybe that drums up interest in the game. Maybe we get some DLC down the road. Maybe we get a Grounded 2. 
who knows but for right now it is a good game i wouldn't say it's really worth the uh the price that they're asking for it if you have the chance i think it's still free on game pass um if i'm not mistaken it, overall it's a good game but there are a lot of issues with it just like any other game the issue with this is it was taken out of full release or early access too soon and just rushed straight to full release it's like one of those movies that in, instead of coming out in theaters they just go straight to dvd i can uh I can put this game in that same kind of uh, sense right there that this game should have come out in theaters, but it was rushed just straight to DVD. So that's my take. Those are 10 things that I really dislike about Grounded. Does it make it a bad game? No. Should it have been a better game? Yes. That's all I have to say about that. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hey, thanks again for watching, everybody. If you like that video, go ahead and check out one of these videos right here. Thanks.